Hello Internet! Welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. We are going to spend this episode building up our faction camp and we're going to be debugging some things to make that happen a little bit more quickly. Before that, we need to go over some business. Number one, I sound different. I know. I, I know, Internet, you hate the change. Everything that is change is bad. Um, I have a new microphone. I purchased a new microphone. And it is something I'm still dialing in. I'm still struggling a bit with figuring out where to sit, how far away the mic is, equalizer settings, um, optimal distance for pop filter, things like that. In fact, let me move my mic closer here. So that is uh, definitely something that you're going to be noticing. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about this. We're not going to go into tons of detail because it's boring and I don't think everyone likes it. Um, a new microphone... It presents some some issues because of the fact that I'm not very good at balancing audio. I don't have a good ear for audio. This is something I think is a mixture of art and science. There's definitely some science to it, but there is definitely also having a good ear and kind of learning over time the proper equalizer settings and things like that. So unfortunately, this new microphone, although it picks up considerably less outside noise, like I currently have a fan running, um, which I can do now, which is great because it's about 85 degrees today uh, and it gets humid AF in this building. Um, despite that, there is, there's some science to it. Like, you know, I've cut the low end. If you listen to my Typing of the Dead series, it's much more bassy and much less crisp and I don't like that, so I've worked on that. And I've cut, trying to cut the um, sibilance, I have issues with my S's. You'll notice there's a whistling sound that comes when I make my S's. I call it a lisp. Some people wouldn't call it that, but it definitely exists. And so I tried my best to cut my S's, but in doing so, it actually cuts a lot of the megahertz where I actually, my speaking voice exists. So unfortunately, if I cut my S's, I come out really bassy and terrible. So I found what I consider probably pretty optimal settings um, based on my personal ear, which is not very good. Uh, I would say I sound pretty close to what I actually sound like in real life. Um, so it leaves this crisp cleanness, and hopefully that is satisfying to you. Um, if not, I apologize. I mean, there's really nothing I can do about it. We will dial it in a little bit more as we progress, but this is the current setup. And, and, and honestly, this is a really great step. I bought this microphone. I bought a mic stand, and I bought a pop filter. And uh, just some general advice. If you're ever trying to do something and you feel like you're bad at it, one of the best things you can do is take some steps to feel more professional. So what I will say with this mic, although it's going to be a very minimal impact on you as a viewer and the level of professionalism of my own attitude and behavior has unchanged, uh, has not been changed, I feel more professional now that I have a proper mic set up. So previously I had my mic sitting on top of a Bible that was stacked on some t-shirts and jeans and that sat right in front of me on the table. Um, and was not very professional, not very optimal, very much a hacky setup. And um, now I have a proper mic stand. I feel much more professional, and that alone makes me feel better about what I'm doing. Same when I was a kid and I was a writer, uh, and I finally switched. I used Notepad, believe it or not, when I was a kid to write, and that is not good. And when I finally switched to a proper word processor with spell check and grammar check and proper formatting, I felt so much more professional. I felt more like oh man, I'm really doing this. I'm not just some idiot in this basement. Um, same as I got older, I learned the proper um, steps for making covers for your when you make a submission with writing. And now, no matter what I'm writing, even if it's never going to be submitted, I always start with a proper title page and proper formatting that you would use to submit a professional manuscript because it gives you that illusion of professionalism and I'll be honest, a lot of people who do things, when you start out, no matter what it is, a hobby, a business, whatever, you're bad at it. <laughs> and any step you can take to feel more like you're actually a pro is is a step in the right direction. So that's, that's enough of that. Um, so hopefully I sound okay. Hopefully my S's are not too terrible. Um, and I am doing some noise reduction from removing the fan from the background of my dialogue. So... If there's any mild distortion, please let me know in the comments. Say, hey, it was really distorted here or at this particular time. That way I can dial that in and know whether or not I can have the fan running or not. 
And on that note, uh, I just checked my analytics. Uh, so I get about 100 views per episode of this series, and it says about 69% of you are not subscribed. So hey, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. You've obviously watched a lot of the tutorial content at this point, and it would help me out immensely because I'm trying to push towards 1,000 subscribers. So uh, anything you can do that would help would be great. Anyway, let's talk Cataclysm. That was five minutes of rambling about microphones. Thank you for bearing with me. I appreciate that. So in the last few episodes, speaking of professionalism, I have not been acting very professional. I've been really, really frustrated, and I've gotten a lot of comments. Um, when I put out my NPC video and I said, look, I don't really like NPCs, I got a lot of pushback for that. A lot of people commented and were like, you're just using them wrong, and I don't really know what that means. Um, but a lot of them were unfavorable. I got some profane, nasty comments. Um, so... I, obviously, people have been disagreeing with me. Um, when I talked about the faction camp, I've had a lot of pushback on saying that I don't really think it has a lot of value for me. And I got a lot of pushback on the style of recording that I do, because this is a Let's Play tutorial. People have said, why don't you do more research? Why don't you just debug everything? It makes for better content when you know what you're doing. It does. You're right. Absolutely. But that's not the kind of content I make. And when I came into this series, my goal was always to do a let's play. It was never going to be, here's an item, I debugged everything, this is the step-by-step -step instructions. That is not the kind of tutorial I want to make. And in fact, if you go to Vormithrax, who is the well-known uh, tutorial guy for Cataclysm, he has a tutorial let's play as well. Yes, he has standalone videos where he does lay things out step-by-step, -step, but there's also a lot of videos where he's playing the game and talking about things as he goes. That's what I wanted to do. So you're right, it would be better to do that kind of content, uh, but that's not the kind of content I enjoy making, and it's not the kind of content I am making. So if you're looking for that, obviously this is not for you. So uh, rather than leaving me hateful comments <laughs> about how bad I am and uh, swearing at me and telling me to do nasty things, instead of doing that, why don't you get a life and spend some time actually, you know, instead of tearing someone down, why don't you take that shit elsewhere? But that's not the majority of you. The majority of you are watching the content and hopefully enjoying the content. And um, so in this episode, we're going to establish our faction camp. I am to the point where I'm frustrated. So obviously, if we were building this in our casual Let's Play, I would grind all the materials myself, right? Um, oh, and worth noting, so I commented when I started this that there's no log option uh, to build like log cabins. Um, Wist, I believe, contacted me and said, oh yeah, that's actually an oversight. Um, I should have made a building for making it out of logs. Um, so I guess Wist had done a lot of work with the faction camps, and then Mark had done like the core building. So I just want to shout those people out because I crapped all over some of your work, and uh, I actually like and respect both of you. Mark in particular was incredibly helpful when I was learning to mod the game, uh, and it feels really bad to know who did the work and then crap on it. And uh, yeah... So, obviously, we would grind this out manually if we were going to do this uh, in our casual playthrough, but because I don't care, I'm just going to debug the large majority of these materials. So, I believe when I went on Discord and complained about the faction camp, people told me that this was intended. It's only supposed to build part of a building, and I actually hate that a lot. I really do wish it was a simple... Um, like fully built building. I would rather build it all in one chunk. And I realize it would take more time. I realize it would take more materials, but I feel like that is better. So we're going to change our faction camp food spot because I don't want it to be under the building uh, over there. So we'll make that over here and then we will delete the other one. And we do that by removing. And that should... It didn't save. Of course, I hit escape twice by accident. Uh, so we want to add a food storage. And the reason we're doing this is because this building presumably is going to expand. And I really don't want to have this overlapped in any way. I don't want to screw that up. Because my initial thoughts when we built this was, oh no, it overlapped with our zone. So it only generated half of the building. So, um, so what do we need here? We're going to build the next section. We're going to need 75 planks, a sheet of glass nails and panels so we're going to debug those things here and we're just going to debug a lot of them so let's go plank just give me like oh they're going to spill out over every tile give me like uh 
150 planks, uh, store an inventory, and then drop the... Oh, no, I have to do this for every plank. I'm just going to hold down Enter, and hopefully this will clear eventually. Up. Oh. The screen is blinking, so I think that means it's working. Yeah, unfortunately, because we spawned 150, I actually hit have to hit enter 150 times. So that is uh, horrible. I don't I don't think it is dropping them when I hold it down. I think I have to tap them. Okay, um, so we're going to build this building, and we're going to debug everything because I don't want to sit here and gather up hundreds of materials in order to build this building. If you were doing this yourself, I do think that deconstructing furniture is still probably the most effective way to do this. I think that harvesting your own from trees... Ah, oh, we did it. Okay. Uh, drop. Oh. Oh, I see. I see what happened. So I was hitting enter rapidly. And what that did was when the screen blinked, it brought up the debug menu again. And when I hit enter, it selected planks again. And it actually saves your previous input so when i hit enter it actually spawned another 150 planks so we actually kind of have to go slow <laughs> pressing the items or else it will debug another 150 so hopefully my reflexes are on point here and we won't overshoot again you'll see they're actually spreading to multiple tiles at our feet okay uh and that is because there are so so many of them in fact, you'll see time is passing very significantly here. All I've done is tried to step to the left. I believe it's now processing all the drops or else I broke the game and we're going to have to restart here. So hopefully this sorts itself out. Uh, that's not great. And my computer sounds like it's taking off. I think we need... Oh, I can't even... It's buffering my inputs now. So I can't even quit to the main menu. Hopefully this is all okay. And my computer doesn't halt and catch fire or anything. Um, yeah, so I would recommend harvesting these from furniture. I do know once you have the faction camp, you can set up the NPCs. There we go. Uh, sorry about that, Internet. I uh, have never really debugged so many materials at once before. So you'll see we've actually spawned about a thousand planks, which is not uh, optimal. So let's try smaller numbers next time. Let's try uh, wood panels. Uh, just panel, I guess. Wooden. Ah, I say I see it's wooden panel, not wood panel. So we'll spawn like 25 of these. And again, we have to drop all these items. I guess if I hold two, it will clear. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to need a lot of nails. So we'll spawn some nails as well. I think the glass component would probably be the most difficult part to get. I, I never used glass making in any capacity in this game. Uh, so I don't know what is exactly is, uh, is required to make. If we go crafting glass, sheet of glass. Oh, well, we, we, we would be able to harvest these from windshields of vehicles. So that's probably what you would need there pretty easy to get actually glass so i think we just need a glass sheet sheet of glass i'm looking here okay i i, I can't read this menu sheet of <laughs> glass yes one sheet of glass go ahead and, and plop that down okay so where's our group here so we need these to be in the zone in order for them to have access to them and we should be able to expand here. One day and five hours. Fab 3, yes, assign Lyle Darden. He begins to upgrade the camp. Now, I could debug skip ahead here um, in time. And I would assume that that would work. I would like to eat and drink first. Just because. And save the game. Before I do that, in case it breaks the game. Um, eat some toastums. We should really go hunting and try to get some proper meat. Uh, I see these are still not collapsing properly. They're not stacking right. So that's unfortunate. Go ahead and eat the wheat. That's a lot of calories. Man, we're still hungry. We don't really have food, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have really calorically dense foods here. 
I really don't want to eat just dried food. Can I make, uh, I don't know, we have beans or something? Cooked beans. We have six dried beans. Uh, beans and rice. Sure, beans and rice. Yes, how many, how long is the shelf life? Up to one week. Sure, we'll make, oh, apparently we could only make one. I'm not sure why. Dispose of this. Drop the wood panel. I don't care at all. Why could I only make one portion of that? Oh, and now we're satisfied? Well, eat it anyway. And we will have a couple drinks. Oh, we're engorged. I'm having a lot of issues with becoming engorged. The messaging has changed. And I'm not... I feel like I'm doing something wrong with the food system in the game at the moment. Which I, I don't love. We also wanted to build a mini freezer. Which I don't think we ever... Got that recipe, although it would be in here with our books. So let's try freezer. Yeah, we don't have the recipe. I forget what that required. I think uh, mechanics five. Because we were grinding up mechanics and electronics. One was for the autoclave. One was for... I think mechanics was for the autoclave. I think electronics was for the freezer. I really don't feel like looking that up because I don't have my browser open. So we do have electronics books. I'm not sure which one would be the best electronics books to read. Um, that's a minus one fun, which is not great. Let's read electronic circuit theory. I imagine that's also a huge negative. I'm not sure what book it is in either, but it would be fine. So if we look at, this is a minus two fun. Oh, they're both minus one. So it wouldn't matter which one we read. We would be unhappy either way. We are still wearing the MP3 player. Oh, it's off and broken. Uh, or out of charges, rather. So go ahead and unload. Can't unload the MP3 player. It doesn't... Really? The battery vanished out of it? That's cool. That's exciting. Um, and our batteries aren't on that pile because they are considered miscellaneous materials. Just give me a light battery, please. Uh, reload. Stop wielding. Oh, our inventory is very full, I guess. Oh, I picked up uh, all the batteries, apparently. Uh, we don't need... Go ahead and drop a lot of this junk that we don't need. Planks. I uh, don't need the sponge anymore. Keep the cash cards. Keep the clothing. Drop the CBMs. Drop the pouches. Keep one battery. And we'll drop everything else. Okay. Reload. The MP3 player. What is in my hands? Electronic circuit theory? Why does it look like a battery? Okay. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Okay. Uh, so let's uh, activate our MP3 player. Oh, I did say I would skip time. So the issue is, if I want to keep playing after this tutorial series, it would be in my best interest not to advance time. We can debug advance time. Um, and I think that will work for the faction camp. The problem is, if we progress time, let's say it takes us 10 days to build our faction camp, so we jump ahead 10 days... That means there's 10 days of monster evolutions, 10 days of food rotting, all that stuff. Um, but we functionally have not changed as a character. So it would be more beneficial for us to actually spend this whole time reading and doing other work because then we're keeping up with the game. If I plan to not play anymore, I can just debug time and it's no big deal. But I am a little hesitant to do it. I think we're going to do it anyway, but uh, I was hesitant to do it. Let's wait for our engorged status to go away. We vomited. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't eat that much, but we vomited. Go ahead and drink, and we're very hungry. Drink, drink. We are thirsty and satisfied. I wonder if there's a delay of that going into our stomach, and that's why this is happening. We're still thirsty. It's so peculiar. We've drunk quite a lot. Um, but anyway, let's debug advanced time, I guess, and see what happens with our faction camp. So we'll go ahead and debug change time, and we'll just jump ahead day five. Our 
13. That should do it, right? And we'll check. Bring our ally. Yes. Returns from upgrading the camp, having earned a bit of experience. Okay. Still not a, not a complete building. At this point, we've put about 120 planks, about 30 wood panels, um, 600 nails, and one glass panel. So for the amount of construction that we're getting, I'm pretty disappointed in the, the, the rate of consumption on raw resources, mostly because... There's no fast and dirty way to get planks. I'd have to spend hours deconstructing furniture and getting those nails, getting those planks. The wood panels are pretty hard to come by. Um, you know, not every furniture item that you would expect to have them actually has them. So that's uh, definitely would be slow going. It looks like it's a three, three piece upgrade. So we'll finish this shack with our next section. It requires 15 more panels, two door hinges, nails, and planks. Now we do, door hinges are pretty easy to get just by, uh, even if we just went back to that police station, whenever they smash a door, there's a uh, door hinge that ends up left behind. So those are not uh, unreasonable materials. It's mostly the immense number of planks and wood panels. Because in my head, a wood panel is like a big sheet of plywood. And that's obviously not the case. Otherwise, this would already be done. You know, if it was just these big panels, I've done some construction in my life, mostly as outreach stuff. When I was involved in the church, we would build churches and things. And the speed with which people put up walls and sheet uh, plywood sheets is like staggeringly fast for an experienced person. Now, if you asked me to do it, it would probably take me all day. But I also don't think it would take me... 180 planks you know 45 wood panels and 900 nails i think that's absurd for a what is referred to as a shack a shack should be a much faster construction and the fact that they're not putting these corners on actually really bothers me um, it makes sense from a construction in-game standpoint because these corners are not relevant this is still treated as sealed uh if it has these two diagonals but that's game logic in in the actual world of the game they would build these corners right it doesn't make sense that they would leave corners off just because they don't absolutely need to build them so i'm a little unhappy about that i don't know if that will change or not when we finish the building so let's spawn a hinge or two because i don't remember how many i needed you figure a door probably has i mean my door has two hinges on it so we'll spawn two, we'll drop them here in the pile. And we'll send Lyle back to work. Oh, what do we not have? More wood panels and nails. Yes, okay. Uh, so we'll spawn panels. And we'll spawn 20 of those. And we'll drop them on the ground. I think I also dropped my gun by mistake. Oh, I dropped my book, yes, okay. And we need more nails, so we will spawn some more nails into here. And if I were doing this manually and gathering these materials myself, I would say it would probably take me probably about five episodes total of harvesting the materials, coming back, setting it up to construct, and then constructing. I would say this would probably take me about two and a half hours real time. That is just an estimate. Um, but so far, all the materials have been pretty basic. They're not like um, super exotic things that are hard to track down. It's mostly just grindy work. So I like that. I like that it's very basic. I do think some of the other ones are silly. The amount, like going to get Mego resin is a bit uh, absurd. It seems to be a very fast construction time, which is cool. Metal takes much longer, which makes sense. It's also much harder to source large amounts of metal than it is wood. The actual proper construction, oh no, this is Waddle and Daub. Uh, it's definitely harder to find limestone and quicklime. Gathering up, you know, you gotta figure for all three, it would take like 150 to 200 pine boughs. That stuff takes a long time to gather that kind of number. And then this is rammed earth also 
Also not the easiest materials to come by. Yeah, I think wood is the way to go. Is the most time effective and material effective uh, because it's the easiest materials to gather. So let's uh, jump ahead here again. Time and we'll, uh, what did it say? Like 10 hours. So we'll go up to 23 and we'll just bump the minutes up a little bit as well. And he should be done. Recall ally. Oh, 39 minutes left. Okay. My mistake. I guess I mathed wrong. Change time. Day 6. Hour 1. No, hour 5. Should do it. It's weird that it's this bright at 5 a.m. Go ahead and bring him back. Returns from upgrading your camp and has earned a bit of experience. Okay. So we have a shack with a window. Uh, if I had built this myself, I got to imagine the material cost would be about the same, maybe a little less, because I do think the nail requirement is a bit more than I expected it to be. I would have preferred to build, like, I, like we discussed when we first came here, I would have rather built my buildings manually than having them built like this. Um, but that's a personal preference that I imagine most players don't share. Uh, and now we can upgrade the building. We can't build the additions yet i don't really know why i guess we have to build these things first probably we need beds right we probably need beds first this is unfortunate as well it requires mattresses which means i can't make them from scratch i have to actually bring mattresses out here that's pretty freaking annoying uh considering i can make my own bed out of wood planks and sheets so i'm disappointed i have to build using actual mattresses. We'll go try to source them in the next episode. Any new jobs opened up? Ongoing. How's our food supply? Yeah, you know, I debugged a bunch of food. That's right. Uh, assign workers. What can I make you do, Lyle? Nothing. Okay. Uh, butchering, chopping logs, fishing. Okay, none of that is helpful. I wanted to make you hunt, but I, I don't see that option. So we can have him gather materials which is not worth the time investment. Firewood, but it's not even real firewood. I'm pretty irritated that it's gonna bring me withered plants and splintered wood. I think that's downright silly. If we have a guy collecting firewood, he should really be bringing back like 90% heavy sticks um, and like long sticks instead of uh, withered plants and wood. Why would you even bring, like a splintered wood is tiny uh volume wise and everything so i i just find that silly and in withered plants i wouldn't even consider firewood so menial labor sorting items i can see how that'll be valuable in the future but currently there's nothing for that to do cutting logs 50 percent will be cut down 10 100 of material will be brought back repeatable with diminishing returns eventually turn forests into fields six hour base plus travel time plus cut time so this is like something that would take him days to really bring anything back. But he probably would he'd bring back logs, right? Yeah, it says cut logs. Okay, clear a forest. We'll be cutting things down. So like slash and burn, it's not going to bring any materials back. It's just clearing land for faction camps. Okay, and then foraging is never going to produce enough calories to be worth it. So I don't really have a job for you at the moment, Lyle. I'm going to have you guard the camp while I'm away. So we'll go ahead and talk to Lyle. Not yet, Lyle. Oh, you're on watch. Okay, see you around. So are you following me or are you guarding? He's, he's guarding, which is what we want him to be doing. Okay. Okay. I mean, so we built our shack. I don't hate it. It's smaller than I expected. Um... The costs aren't exactly what I want them to be. And uh, having a single window is a, is a nice touch, I guess. It's a little small. How am I going to fit a fireplace and beds and everything in here? That's a bit surprising. We could put the brazier. We have a brazier. We could do that. Set up some cover. We should build a brazier. Let me go grab my brazier, and we'll do that, and then we'll call the episode. So we're making progress. I definitely want my SIG. Definitely don't want to lose that. Uh, tools pile is up here. 
and we're looking for the brazier. Grab that, take that down for Lyle. I do wish I could just set these things up manually instead of dropping them in the pile and then having it place it for me. Send Lyle to do it. How long does that take? Five minutes. Okay, well, that's an easy one. So wait five minutes. One second left. Okay, bring Lyle back. Returns from upgrading our camp. So now we have a brazier, which I can still just take down. So what is the point of that instead of me doing it manually? And if I did it manually, it would take me literally about three seconds. Why did it take Lyle five full minutes? There might be some limitations on how long they can be gone. Maybe they have to be gone at least five minutes. And we could just make a straw bed. Out. We could gather like pine boughs. I'd rather make a proper bed though. We'll look into that in the next episode. For now, thank you for watching. Again, bear with me with the mic changes. Hopefully this sounds okay. I, again, I'm doing some uh, equalization as well as post-processing type stuff. So if I sounded distorted, please, it would be very helpful to me. I know a lot of times when I ask people to comment, they don't do it. But uh, if you notice any serious distortion in the video, please leave me a comment, even if it's just to say, you know, hey, this sounded okay. Hey, this sounded like uh, like you're in a tin can. Hey, this sounded like bubbling water. Like, I don't know. Any issues with the sound, please let me know. But please don't, be nice. Don't make fun of my S's. I know I can't help it. I have bad teeth and... I've always had kind of a lisp and my S's sound whistly and I can't do anything about it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Throat's giving out on me as well. Um, and I will be back with more in the near future, so I'll see you in the next episode.